Hi, in this video I'm going to talk to you about ASP.NET and why you might want to learn how to use it if you're a programmer. So ASP.NET is part of the .NET framework. And if you want to learn about how that works and the technology behind it, see a previous video that I just created for this class. So my name is Shad Sluter, and I teach computer programming at Grand Canyon University. Some of the courses that I teach include things with C-sharp and ASP.NET. So two classes that we teach here at the school are for Windows Forms. So we learn how to, the, how to use the basic C-sharp programming language, and we create applications that run on Windows. And so Windows Forms, or WinForms, are two classes that precede the one that you're about to see. What we're interested in right now is this class here called ASP.NET, and the class name at GCU is called CST247. So what we try to teach here is how to create websites with C Sharp and the .NET framework. As you can see, the .NET framework includes other things such as mobile apps and gaming, but those are for other classes and not for this series right now. We're interested in the, in the website development using ASP.NET. So if you were to look at a stack of all of the components that are in the .NET framework, ASP.NET is one of many pieces. So ASP.NET is a unified web development model that is part of .NET. So when you write applications for the web using .NET, you don't have to use C Sharp, although that is the most common language that people choose. You could also use something like Visual Basic. So the type of programming that you're going to work with on ASP.NET is websites. So you're going to have to know how to use CSS, HTML, and the associated JavaScript things that go with them. So why was ASP.NET invented? What was the point? Well, back in the 90s, we were trying to get from desktop applications to web applications. And so .NET and ASP in particular were invented to do that. So in the old days, or even in the simpler ways that you write software, use forms and buttons, Windows applications, so this is a great way to learn C Sharp, but to actually use C Sharp in the real world, you're probably going to be working with websites. ASP.NET was an answer to Java. So Java was first to the game to take a compiled language, run it on a web server, and create websites. And of course, uh, the early days of Java have improved vastly since then, as well as ASP. So, Microsoft was a little bit late to the game, and they copied many of the things that Java was already doing, but they are very competitive today. So in the Phoenix area where I live, if you look at the job listings, um, there are just as many .NET jobs as there are Java jobs, and they are both accomplishing many of the same things. Don't confuse ASP with ASP.NET. Active server pages were the original design to make websites using the Microsoft server, but ASP.NET has been a vastly improved version of that. So here's some code that lets you see what ASP.NET looks like. So this markup language that you're looking at is called Razor, and if you are a programmer at all, you can probably look at it and understand what's being done. The first line of the code shows that we're working with a class called product. And uh, in, in this uh, system, it's called a model. And so we have a for loop going on, and you notice that every time you have an at symbol in the language, that you're doing some kind of uh, C-sharp code. The other language that you see there is HTML. And so in this particular case, we want to loop through everything in the model and uh, each counter variable is a product. And you can see that the product has properties such as a name, a description, and a unit price. If the unit price is zero, we want to print free to the website. If the uh, price is not free, then we want to print the actual cost. And so that's an example of how you would use the c -sharp language and Razor in particular, embedding into a website. So this particular part of the application is called the view, which is a website. So ASP is run on the server. It combines the two languages, HTML and the ASP elements, into a dynamic page that is displayed to the user. So there are many ways that you can create a website using a dynamic language. It doesn't have to be ASP.NET. So PHP is obviously one of them. It's very popular. It's a free open source product been around for a long time 
and even though the popularity seems to be declining, it is still a strong player. So if you wanted to see something that was equivalent in PHP to what you can do with C-sharp and .NET, you would probably look to Laravel. That is the leading framework. There are others, such as CodeIgniter or others, but Laravel seems to be the leading part. At Grand Canyon University, we have three classes that are being taught for PHP, and uh, we use Laravel in our third class, so many of the concepts that you would learn in 256 are the same as the course that we would learn here in 247. Of course, I mentioned before that Java has competitors as well. They were using uh, dynamic websites in many years before Microsoft got to the game. So two types of Java that you might think of when you try to create dynamic websites, the Java Enterprise stack, which was the original, and then Java Spring, which seems to be uh, very much uh, eclipsing the popularity of Java Enterprise. But both of those are used today for creating websites that are dynamic and written in the Java language. You can work with Python if you like. There are frameworks such as Flask and Django that will be both working together to uh, create the same kind of effect. Uh, you can just learn JavaScript. JavaScript is supposed to be the language that the only language you ever need to know because you can write the front end, obviously, in your web browser, which was its original design, but JavaScript is used in the back end in the Express framework, and it is used now to create more dynamic pages using React or Angular. And so the stacks called Mean and Mern would replace your project in uh, ASP.NET. Recently, Go is a language sponsored by Google, which seems to have come out of nowhere and is uh, gr growing in popularity. <laughs> Who knows, putting it in this video might be risky. It could disappear in a year, or it might seem quaint that I'm talking about a new language called Go. We'll see how time tells. But anyway, you frequently combine Go as your back-end engine, which is, uh, its advantages are that it's, uh, it's a compiled language and it runs very fast, so it handles multiple transactions quickly. And uh, usually you pair it up with something like React on the front end. But this entire list here would show you that .NET is not the only thing that you can choose if you want to build a website using a server on the back end. So these languages are some of them. I could mention Ruby and others, but uh, this gives you a pretty good idea of who the main players are if you are considering building a dynamic website. So since many of the people watching this video are likely familiar with PHP, I'd like to make a comparison and contrast between the two technologies. So you can use PHP with a LAMP stack, and it's similar in, in this uh, class that we're going to teach here because they both use computer code on the server to generate HTML pages. And so the syntax that you work with is HTML combined with PHP code, very similar to what you will see in the C-sharp. However, the differences are that ASP.NET is a compiled language, and so theoretically it should run faster because interpreted languages have to be translated into machine code at runtime, and compiled languages have done that uh, ahead of time. And uh, ASP.NET, of course, is just a property of Microsoft. Uh, the .NET Core is now supposedly open source, and it can run on any type of server, but historically Microsoft has been the sole owner of ASP. And LAMP was born out of a complete open source project that, um, you know, is free. Also, if we wanted to make a side-by-side -side comparison between Microsoft and uh, Java, we'll call it .NET versus the JVM, because those are the two technologies that seem to be like brothers and sisters, or at least uh, sibling rivals. And so the, uh, the, com the comparison and contrast is, is listed here. Notice the runtime on this uh, third line down, uh, CLR and the JVM. Both are accomplishing the same thing. We are compiling to intermediate bytecode and running on a machine uh, library that has to be installed. So the idea is that you can use uh, one set of code and run it on multiple platforms. So that was the original uh, concept behind Java. Write one set of uh, source code and run it on every platform that was available. And you need the, the JVM to do that. And so Microsoft is doing the same thing with the CLR. There's an entire video, uh, if you'd like to see, the contrast and how .NET works behind the scenes and how it compiles code. You can see th throughout the list here that if there is something, uh, some feature in one language, there is an alternative and equivalent uh, type of terminology in the other stack. So you can really accomplish many of the same things in both languages if you uh, have a preference or depends on where you work. 
is what you're probably going to become an expert on. You don't necessarily have to have both languages in your toolkit, although that would certainly be a great resume, but you can accomplish many of the same things with either language and at similar cost. So that's an overview of ASP.NET and what we're going to learn. So if you want to see the link here on this page to lead to the rest of the course, I'm going to be teaching you how to create web pages using ASP.NET.